Tonight we had a great evening with SJ Watson, who came to Shearer's to talk about his phenomenal first book, Before I Go to Sleep. Welcome to Shearer's, Steve. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Steve, uh, I know that uh, you were an audiologist and you were writing um, in the weekends and at night, and then you got uh, into the Faber Academy. Mm. Uh, tell us why, why that was so important and, and how much influence that had on your writing of Before I Go to Sleep. Yeah, I mean, I think it was important because um, it came at a time in my life when I wanted to devote much more of my life to writing. Um, and it, helped, it really helped me to focus. It was a six-month course, and I remember very early on in the course, in fact, on the first night of the course, Louise Doughty, who was one of the tutors, she said to us, You've all done really well to get on the course, but that's the last nice thing I'm going to say to you. She said, it's hard work from here on in, um, but for the next six months at least, I give you permission to call yourself a writer. And that's kind of important for me, and I think it's an important, an important stage for any aspiring novelist, I think, is, or an aspiring writer, really, is to say, I'm going to call myself a writer and think of myself as a writer. I think the course allowed me to do that. I thought of myself as a writer. So even yes. though so you gave yourself ownership to be a writer. Yes, and absolutely. Yes. And even though no, but even though people would ask me, I mean, when people ask me what I did for a living, I would say I'm a writer, and they would say, oh, "What have you had published?" And I say, "Well, nothing." Um, I had the kind of confidence to do that. So I think it was that was important for me. Well, because the Faber Academy has now come to Australia mm. and has been in Sydney, and one of the authors that's been in our when genres attack, James Bradley, has been a tutor and oh, uh, right, yeah. uh, and has, and and it's been very successful so fantastic for mm. Faber to do this mm. to uh, to really nurture mm. young writers because mm. that's the future yeah I think so it is and um, and it's and my experience anyway is with of course it's a great opportunity to meet some amazing people some amazing writers and who could pass on their knowledge and and, um, and help you to to, uh, to discover how you write one of the questions tonight was to uh, to really acknowledge and say to you how how well you actually took over your main character mm. as who was a woman, mm. uh, Christine, and uh, uh, and how well you did it, uh, and was that difficult? Uh, and you gave a great answer, yeah. and I'd love you to tell us about it now. <laughs> um, for me, it, it was always Christine's story. There were lots of issues and things I wanted to discuss in the book that um, I couldn't really have discussed in the same way if it had been written from a, from a male perspective. So I, it was always a, a, a story of a woman. And I always wanted to write in the first person. And it never really felt like a particularly brave decision as I was writing it, because um, for me, the, the, the big jump, if you like, was into the head of an amnesiac, a woman who has no memory. Uh, so the fact that she was a woman was almost, um, not a triviality, but it almost felt like a minor issue. Um, and I think for me the joy of writing really is about, is about wearing somebody else's shoes and, and moving around a different world. So it was fun to write from a woman's perspective and I think I was very aware it had to be right and the voice had to be authentic and you know I showed certain passages to female friends and family members um, to check that I was on the right lines but uh, I, I had a lot of fun and I think it's kind of my job to be somebody else. Now I know when it's now been uh, there's 40 countries that are that are now uh, publishing your book, mm. uh, and the other thing is that it's going to be made into a movie uh, with Scott Ridley as as the director. Mm -hmm. um, how much input are you have you got in in that? Um, I'm lucky enough that the, the director the director is actually Joe, Rowan Joff Ridley Scott is, is uh, exec, exec oh, right. producing yes. it but uh, Rowan is, is will be directing and, and has written the screenplay and he's very keen for me to be involved creatively but um, I'm kind of leaving well alone in a way I I think I'm not a filmmaker I'm not a script writer so I think all I could really do is mess things up if I tried to get involved so as long as the spirit and the heart of the book is intact um, my job was to make sure it was in, in the hands of smart people who would do a good job, and I've done that. I, you know, I, I know that, that Rowan is, will do a good job, and so it's my job now to leave well alone. I mean, I think if, if they were ever to, to suggest doing something which I felt was totally wrong and not in the spirit of the book, I think I, then I would, I would um, you know, kick up a bit of a fuss. But I don't see that happening because Rowan really understands the material and has the same ideas and desires for the film that I do. Now, I, I was reading today that uh, Kate Blanchett and Kate Winslet uh, are both 
would both love to play uh, Christine, <laughs> mm. uh, and you asked people to put their hands up yes. in the audience. Who 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 would they prefer? Oh, don't well, ask of me course, who I prefer. <laughs> of course, they said Kate Blanchett. So <laughs> we're looking forward to the movie coming out, and we're also looking forward to you, your next novel, which I know that you've started. Mm. Thank you for coming, uh, and good luck. And and uh, you're a great writer. Thank you so much. It's been great to be here. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Thank you.